Make sure you check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. Could you tell us some um, stories, if you have them, about DACT in the F-16? Yeah, we, being a, um, uh, a uh, training unit, we didn't really have a lot of um, uh, time to go and do extraneous stuff. But uh, we did a little bit. Um, we flew DACT against the F-4s of our own wing mm -hmm. um, until uh, they were phased out. Uh, we also went up to Langley and did some combat against the F-15, and it was the F-15 really that we uh, we mostly uh, uh, fought against. How did it fare against the F-15? The early F-16 had no radar missile. Okay, it only had a variety of um, AIM-9s, the uh, uh, Papa, uh, Juliet, and eventually the Lima, which had a head-on capability. Mm -hmm. um, so the F-15 was at a great advantage um, at long range, uh, and it had the AIM-7 missile. The trick was, by whatever nefarious means, to live till the merge, mm -hmm. and we had a variety of tactics. Yeah. If you could do that, then it was a knife fight in a telephone mm -hmm. box, and the F-15 we referred to as a flying tennis court, because once yeah. you got the sight on it, you couldn't get it off. Yeah. Um, and because of the aerodynamic um, particularly the, the uh, limiting uh, flight controls. Uh, so you got maximum G when you needed it, you got maximum AOA when you needed it, no chance of overstressing, um, and you could just throw the aeroplane around. Could it sustain a 9G uh, turn? Certainly could, the, uh, the, the pilot couldn't. But the aircraft could. But the aircraft could. Yeah. So could you describe the cockpit to us? Yes, it was by today's standards, uh, Stone Age. Um, it was wonderful at the time. You sat in this uh, 30 degree reclined seat, uh, although uh, you did put your head to the vertical, so you flew with, with a slight head nod the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, your senses would, uh, would have been thrown out of kilter. Mm -hmm. um, so the seat was very comfortable. The sitting position with a, with a side stick controller was just, um, just what you needed, yeah. really. It, it was very easy to get, uh, hold, uh, get used to. We had an elbow rest there for uh, holding your uh, right arm steady against the um, side stick uh, mm. under high G, but really most of the time we didn't use it. Mm. Uh, in terms of instruments, it was still pretty much an analog cockpit, okay, mm. round dials. Um, the HUD was extremely good, uh, and in fact the HUD, because it was so much better than the head down instruments, um, was the primary flight instrument display, mm -hmm. uh, unlike most of our airplanes where you use the HUD all the time, but when the chips are down, the primary display is the, is the round dials. Yeah. Um, it had a, a little radar set um, where the stick would normally be, so you looked straight down into the radar set, 90 degrees off, and it was uh, very easy to, to read, computerized radar presentation. Um, and it had a stores management set, which was a sort of little uh, MFD, uh, but uh, hard keys only, unlike the touch screens of today. Um, what else on the, uh, on the cockpit? Uh, hands on throttle and stick, there were some radar controls um, on a panel, um, but mostly once you'd got that set up, you could fight the airplane with, uh, with the switches on the throttle and stick, and that was pretty revolutionary. Yeah. So, could you tell us the difference between the A and the B model? Uh, the A model was single seat, uh, B model was uh, two seater. Um, very similar, the, because of the shape of the airplane, the um, view out of the back cockpit was not terrific. Um, but uh, you had a repeater um, where your radar scope was, uh, you could make into a TV 
screen of the uh, the view out the front from the front cockpit so you could actually land looking at this television screen mm -hmm. uh, which showed the uh, the front cockpit HUD mm -hmm. um, it was yes um, it, it was uh, a trainer designed purely for that yeah so how was it coming from like a twin engine aircraft to a single engine um, I don't think we ever noticed. I mean, the uh, the, the single engine in the F F-16 gave it more performance than the twin engines in either of the other fighters I'd flown. Yeah. So it was um, comfortably over 1.1, 1 to uh, uh, 1, -to -one uh, powder weight ratio on takeoff. Uh, the subsequent engines were uprated, but by the same token, the uh, all-up mass of the airplane uh, mm -hmm. went ballistic as uh, as they added new kit to it so essentially the um, the performance of the uh, f-16 then in the early days was pretty much i think like it, it is now so the engine was very reliable yes it, it was a pratt and whitney 100 engine um, and it had powered the f-15 and the f-15 had a lot of trouble with it i think mm. in the early days but um, they had two of them uh, and so, uh, with constant modification, um, the engine became extremely reliable, which of course we were very glad about. In fact, it was so reliable that until my successor, who'd come from Chivener, arrived uh, at MacDill, uh, they had no means of landing the aeroplane engine off. Really? Uh, well, they, they, they thought they could do it, but they had no procedure. Yeah. Uh, and they thought the engine was so reliable, quite rightly, um, that it wasn't worth hazarding. And therefore, if the engine stopped, you jumped over the side. Yeah. Um, John arrived and, uh, and showed that with very little risk, uh, you could get an airplane back on the ground. Uh, and, um, uh, and that procedure was adopted by them. Yeah. So did you ever conduct air-to-air -air refueling? Yes. Um, uh, AAR had been a part of uh, our life really um, since the lightning days. The lightning really needed it because uh, it had no fuel to uh, to endure. Um, the F4 did it to extend time on cap. Uh, going to the States, of course, we went from probe and drogue in UK to the uh, boom and receptacle. So that was a little bit to learn. And in fact, the first time I practiced that, I was in the back seat of an F4. Um, we did the uh, tanking trials on the KC-10 mm -hmm. um, for, for the F-16 from McDill uh, and really it was, um, it was just a, a different technique to achieve the same end.